Um, our discussion today will be with impacted families and service providers about the baby formula shortage. We, uh, we are, our, our goal today is to provide clear and reliable information for families about what resources are available and our government's response. We'll also learn more about what Congress's next steps will be. Washington will no doubt be a leader in those efforts because Senator Murray and Congresswoman Dr. Kim Schreier are tireless advocates for families and children dedicated to ensuring access to sound nutrition that is needed to grow and thrive. Senator Murray, could you please start us off with your opening remarks? Well, Christina, thank you so much. And uh, thank you all for joining me today for this really important discussion. I have heard from so many parents about how hard the infant uh, formula shortage has been for them. And I know that our local food banks, which help so many of our families put food on the table, are seeing these challenges firsthand. I know you're worried. I know people are angry. And I am too. I'm really focused on doing anything I can to fix this and really make sure it never happens again. It's incredibly frustrating to me to see that this has even gotten to this point where so many families cannot get the formula that they need. I've been asking for answers from FDA, from Abbott, since Abbott first announced a recall and stopped production at its Sturgis plant. It's really inexcusable to me that FDA and Abbott had been hearing reports of, infant potentially sick, of infants potentially sickened by contaminated formula for months before any public action, but still uh, have been so caught off guard and so slow to act to address the shortages that this has caused. This is really a failure at every level by the manufacturers and regulators, and now the most vulnerable in our society are paying the price. Now in the immediate, immediate term, we are seeing some helpful steps. President Biden invoked the Defense Production Act to make sure infant formula manufacturers are at the front of the line for the ingredients that they use. And Operation Fly Formula, which is now bringing millions of containers worth of formula directly to our shores, including a shipment of badly needed hypoallergenic formula. Last week, the Senate provided families with the tightest budgets, parents who use the WIC program, more flexibility to purchase the form formula that they can find in their area. Something I am hopeful that will be especially helpful to families um, at our food banks who uh, our food banks are working so hard to serve. These are good steps, but there is a lot more that needs to be done. And I just have to say as a mother, as a grandmother, I know that parents are not gonna rest easy until there is formula back on the shelves and until they can feed their kids. And I want all of you to know that I will not rest either. either. I am pressing infant formula manufacturers to step up and produce more. I'm pressing President Biden to name a formula coordinator and put together a national plan. Earlier this morning, I just got back, I chaired a Senate hearing on the shortage where I pressed the FDA commissioner really hard directly about what we are going to do to end this shortage, get safe formula on the shelves as fast as possible, and get parents the information they need to get it and make sure we're never in this situation again. I'm not going to let up until we get this fixed and until all of you have the resources that you need, which is why it is so important to me to have this opportunity right now to hear directly from all of you about the challenges that you're facing and what we need to do to get you the help you need. We are all hands on deck here to help parents in Washington State however we can. And with that, I want to turn to my friend, Congresswoman and pediatrician, Kim Schreier, whom we are so lucky to have in Congress. Kim. Well, thank you to my friend, Senator Murray, for always being such a leader on everything that affects families and children uh, for your entire career. Uh, I'm glad to see several of my constituents from Bonnie Lake here today. Claire, it's also wonderful to see you. The reason we're here is that um, you have all been directly impacted by this national baby formula shortage. And let's just think about that for the moment. Here in the United States of America, we have a shortage of baby formula. This has been such a difficult time for parents. I mean, Virtually all infants, even breastfed infants, rely on formula to some degree, and infants six months and younger 
aren't really eating food yet. And so their only options are breast milk and formula. And then there are some children with metabolic diseases or allergies who can only digest um, some very specialized formulas, which happen to come from this one plant in Sturgis, Michigan. And so that is why it is such a crisis when there's not enough infant formula in the country. And uh, thank you, Senator Murray, for chairing this hearing this morning in the Senate. Um, you've been a champion forever for families and children. And yesterday in my committee, the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee of the Energy and Commerce Committee held a hearing with the FDA and with formula manufacturers about this shortage. And the goals really were to figure out what went wrong and to find ways to make sure it never happens again. And I, when I distill this down, I think there's two fundamental concerns. One is safety and sanitary conditions at the factory that shut down. And the other is the cascade of events that resulted in this national shortage and whether we can put safeguards in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. There are just a handful of companies in the United States who manufacture formula and virtually all of the formula that our babies drink is manufactured right here in the US. So if just one company is taken offline, there are ripple effects across the country. And just to put numbers on it, this factory in Sturgis makes 40% uh, of all the Similac products and about 20% of all baby formula across the country. And so one of the things that would be really important is to have an early warning system to alert the USDA and the FDA if there's an anticipated disruption of supply, just like we have with medications already. And I am introducing legislation to do just that. I also think we need to be thinking about whether formula should be in our strategic national stockpile because it is kind of like a medication for babies. They can't live without it. And then there's this issue of safety. I mean, we need to know that when this Michigan plant is up and running again, that it maintains high standards for sanitation. And I grilled uh, the CEO yesterday because the FDA inspection and the whistleblower report were so alarming and so damning, and they point to a pattern of disregard for cleanliness and sanitation. And this is baby formula. And so we need to know about whether there will be a whole sea change in the culture at this facility to make sure there's a no, no nonsense, no, toler no tolerance approach to keeping uh, formula safe. I also just wanna to touch on the fact that this has really impacted lower income families who rely on WIC. WIC is the Women, Infant, Children Nutrition Program that provides formula to lower income families. And about half the infants in this country get their formula through WIC. And this year, most states had a contract with Abbott or Similac. And so the shortage hit these families the hardest and there's, they are the ones who can't run around to a thousand different stores to try to find a formula. And so uh, last week, Congress passed a bill and the president signed it to allow families to use their WIC vouchers for any comparable formula. And Abbott is reimbursing families for their costs. Um, I am sure parents out there are incensed rightly so. Um, and in the meantime, please know that I am working on legislation to make sure this never happens again. And I will stay on top of these formula companies to make sure that the highest standards are maintained. If I could add one more, just one more thing for parents who are worried um, about what they could do right now, babies who are older than six months can get a lot of their nutrition from food. And if you can provide uh, a balance of you know, dairy, protein, iron, vegetables, you can get great nutrition into babies that age without relying as much on formula. They can also on a temporary basis be given whole milk, cow's milk. Um, and that's temporary, but that will free up formula supplies for younger children while we wait about six weeks to be back to normal. Um, as the first and only pediatrician in Congress, I will fight for our children and our families. Thank you. And I yield back to, uh, to Claire, thank you. Thank you, Representative Schreier, and thank you, Senator, for getting to, um, for doing a top-down analysis of this and for moving forward important next steps. It is my honor to now introduce to you Inez Santos. Inez Santos actually lives in your district, Congresswoman, and uh, she is directly impacted by the formula shortage. She has been doing what she can personally 
not just for her family, but for others in the community who are trying to secure this essential nutrition for their babies. And she wants to share her story with you in the Synergy Day. Please, Ness, when you're ready. Hi, um, my name is Ines Santos. I am a mother, um, a single mother of three children. My youngest is one is the baby of nine months old who has been directly in back of this shortage of formula. And um, that has brought out a lots of struggles, a lots of challenges, a lots of emotions to, uh, for, for my family. We are like, have to drive all the way multiple times all the way around in town i had to drive once multiple times all the way down to everett and i live in bunny lake and i drove uh, all the way down to everett to get um some formula and not not enough only two cans i was able to find there my baby was on simulate and after that recall we had to switch to um infant milk and it took a time for him to adjust to the new formula so when he finally got to that point we started again with the short gauge and that 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 was a whole new uh thing for me i was scared i was stressed i was um hopeless i i wasn't sure what to do i will go to bed and uh with that concern i might have enough for this week i might gonna have to um not get enough grocery for this week and save that money for gas to be able to drive around save that money to purchase um some formula for my baby even my older kids will come home and be concerned um, before they will come home and say, mom, what do we have for dinner? They will walk into that door and say, mom, do we have enough formula for baby brother today? And that's just a heartbroken. It was just a heartbroken for me to see how my older kids are now are affecting by what's going on with the shortage of formula it has affected all of us as a family and um i have other friends another um another friend who has the barrier of language she will go and drive every single store check on the shelves they're empty and because of the language barrier, she cannot go and ask the customer service and check if they have some because now they're not on the shelf. If they have some, you need to go check at customer service and then they'll let you have one can or two. But you can't find them anymore at the shelf. And that that's another. I see that she's in this dark spot where she's um, can't find formula on the shelves and she has that other barrier of language that she can't go and communicate and ask for help ask for uh, formula so it's it's very frustrated families are suffering um i am like i had to cut down i had to um or we're not gonna have steak tonight to save that money and for gas, we need to travel today. We probably need to travel to rent and to other stores to see if we can find formula. So it has been impact on emotionally, um, economy and uh, my baby's health. I, I just want him to see, to, to grow healthy, to grow happy, to get all the nutrients that he needs. And every day when I see that this is, probably um it's a fair i don't know i'm i'm, I'm a scare i don't know if i'm going to have enough formula uh tomorrow what's going to happen not knowing what's going to happen that uncertain is very very sad and it's scary it's it's a struggle where families moms should moms and babies should not go through this moms deserve to enjoy their babies to see them grow healthy happy and bright moms deserve that babies have the right to to be healthy to be fed and when we're seeing that this is not happening this is not um it's it's not on our hands we're seeing that this is um very bad situation it's it's really bad and families should not go through this and that that's that's the reason why um I'm here to speak for my family, to speak up for my family, to speak up for those other moms that are experiencing the same. 
that, that are going to bed at night and waking up in the next morning thinking, am I going to make it today? Um, is my baby going to be fed today? Uh, we need to do something for those families. We need to do something for those moms that are cutting down on grocery to be able to uh, fill their tanks and gas and go buy some formula. And and we we want we want our babies to grow healthy and happy. Thank you, Ines. We want your babies, all babies, to grow up happy and healthy as well too. And um, you're right, this shouldn't be put on mothers and babies. This is our community collective responsibility together. And so now we are going to be hearing from uh, representatives from community food banks, who in addition to providing nutritious food, are working hard to source and provide baby formula, diapers, and other essentials for babies. And so first we'll hear from Stacy Cernich, who is the Chief Executive Officer for the Bonnie Lake Food Bank. And Stacey, um, just to get us back on track, if you could keep your remarks to two minutes, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Inez. Thank you so much for just um, being a voice uh, for our community members in East Pierce and around the nation. Um, your bravery in showing up today and um, getting that important message across. I just am uh, so deeply thankful to you, um, Representative Schreier and Senator Murray. Thank you so much for bringing attention to this. As you can see, this impact is uh, phenomenal. It's a phenomenal imp impact on the families um, all over, but in particular, the socially vulnerable. Um, you know, at the Bonnie Leak Food Bank, we've been deeply committed throughout this pandemic um, to providing safety nets and reducing barriers um, in our community, you know, just to impact COVID and beyond. Um, but what we know is that, you know, things like gas prices, you know, supply chain issues, the price of food, that those are compounding effects on the community members that we serve. Um, you know, for many, it feels like an inconvenience. Um, but as you can hear from Inez, how she sort of really gave us a glimpse into what the life of her family is like right now, that it sends families into spirals of survival and these cycles that you can't get out of. And it evokes, you know, trauma, sometimes generational trauma, that um, the, the children now that aren't, you know, the children that aren't formula fed are experiencing this trauma. Um, I think that, you know, basic human rights like food and housing are really a matter of our entire society and require all of our attention. Um, as people like Inez speak up and tell us what she's experiencing, we can't unknow these things. I can't unknow some of these barriers that our community members are facing and how they have um, had these devastating effects. You know, in the last eight weeks, the Bonnie Lake Food Bank is serving 500 new families signed up that have never received service before. That's on top of a 7% increase that we experienced as a result of our, you know, um, relentless pursuit to uh, eliminate barriers to access. So on top of that, 500 additional families, all with children, all experiencing, um, you know, the gas and inflation prices. So this is just like when I was speaking with Inez, I couldn't help but just stay on the phone with her. You know, this is like a blow that, you know, as a society, a blow that I just, we cannot afford to not be able to feed our children. That is, um, unconscionable to me. When she started talking with me about her friend, which um, she, she did not tell this part of the story, but it was literally, it gave me such great pause um, and I can't get it out of my mind. Her friend that was experiencing, you know, that um, language barrier on top of this barrier to access and the gas prices and all of the difficult choices that families are having to make um, to survive, not thrive, survive. And, um, you know, her, out of frustration, she had to feed her baby oatmeal water to get it to stop crying. This friend that it, that has all of these barriers, and so it, you know, that's Inez's story. How many stories, you know, are there? Uh, it's devastating. It's devastating. So thank you so much for your attention to this, um, and um, whatever that we can do um, as community members and members of our society. Um, this is the time. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, uh, Stacey. Um, you're right, it is devastating and this is the time. So uh, next we are going to hear from Carmen Smith, who is the executive director of the White Center Food Bank. Thanks, Christina. Um, thanks everyone for having me here today. It's really an honor to be able to speak on behalf of the families that we serve at White Center Food Bank. So our experience goes back to February when the recall was announced and White Center Food Bank ended up having to throw away about a thousand pounds of formula. Um, to give you some context, that's about half of our large dumpster that we have. And that experiencing for the staff and the volunteers that had to carry out that work was completely devastating. As an essential service organization, you know, we are often a pretty reliable option for families and it's hard whenever we can't be there for the community in the ways that they need us to support them, especially um, when it's a service we have been able to provide consistently in the past. And we've already served nearly 500 families through our baby pantry program this year. And it's really hard to see them struggle and not be able to offer them any real solutions. Um, they've been sharing their stories, similar to Inez, about how hard formula is to find. You know, parents are letting us know they're traveling from store to store, city to city, in hopes of finding formula. We actually have our own staff person on maternity leave, and she shared with me just the other day that she was super excited because she found this can of Similac at a Rite Aid, um, but it was nearly double the price, and a can like that only really lasts her two days, maybe three days if she can really stretch it out, and switching formula can be really difficult for families, especially you know, families on WIC, because at least prior, um, it doesn't allow them to be able to pivot in the stores without prior approval. And switching formula can be really scary. We had a parent share with us that um, that was their only option was to switch formula. And they ended up having to take their baby to the emergency room because their baby had just a horrible reaction. And you could see the emotion in this parent's face when they're telling us the story because they just felt horrible that they put their child through that, but it was either switch formula or not feed their child. And, you know, the latter isn't, isn't really even an option. Um, and the situation has gotten so bad for the parents that we serve that they started asking us uh, where they can buy breast milk. And we're hearing now that um, parents are hoping to buy breast milk from neighbors on platforms like next door, which can also be really, that's incredibly risky. So I'm really glad to hear that steps are being made as they lead us in the right direction, but I hope more sound solutions develop that create accessibility for all families. So parents don't have to make stressful decisions on how to feed their babies and they can just enjoy being a parent and enjoy bonding with their child. Thank you, Carmen. And thank you again to you and Stacy for really spearheading this community response. We are now going to learn more about uh, and turn our attention to information and resources from the Washington Department of Health. Here with us today is Michelle Roberts, Assistant Secretary for the Prevention and Community Health Division. Welcome, Michelle. Well, thank you and good morning, everybody. Um, thank you to Senator Murray and Representative Schreier for your support for children and health. And thank you especially to Inez for sharing your story. I am so sorry your family is experiencing this. And thanks also to Stacy and Carmen for the work to support our communities. This infant formula shortage continues to be an incredible challenge for our families and caregivers, and also for our WIC clinics across the state to mitigate and manage. Knowing that in Washington, there are parents like Inez driving from county to county in search of formula to feed their babies is heartbreaking and frustrating. Inez, you are right. Mothers and families, and definitely our babies, do not deserve this. Being able to feed our infants and babies safely is foundational to healthy families. This is the crux of our WIC program here in Washington to safeguard and support the nutritional health of women, infants, and children up to age five. 
Currently, our WIC program serves over 120,000 women, infants, and children in 205 clinics um, every month across our state. 53,000 of those are infants, and 15,000 of them are affected by the formula recall. Our state and local WIC staff pay a critical role in helping families find safe food for their babies. Our WIC team used the federal waiver options to add about 60 additional formula options to WIC benefits to give flexibility to families. But unfortunately, many of these additional options are also in short supply. When families report that they aren't finding what they need, our state WIC staff can complete separate purchases for formula and ship it directly to the local WIC clinic for the family to pick up. I want families to know that we have a new webpage in 16 languages that has information and resources to help them. We can use your help in spreading that information and sharing it with families. It is linked on our homepage at doh.wa.gov. We are also posting information in our WIC Shopper app, which is used by over 90% of our WIC participants in Washington. So while the actions of our WIC team here in Washington and the federal government are helping ease the infant formula shortage, it is not solving every gap and problem. So unlike the recent GIF peanut butter recall, where families can easily purchase another brand of peanut butter right there in the store, the infant formula shortage exposes a limitation of having only one formula manufacturer for each WIC program. We're committed to working on long-term structural solutions to um, improve WIC and help prevent this type of situation in the future. Thank you for having me here with you today. Thank you, Michelle. And I just wanna re really reiterate, we've heard today about the government response, the community response from our food bank partners. And now that's a call in action to individuals as well, because it's word of mouth about those resources that gets to families in need. So thank you again to all of our speakers. Food security, insecurity is already a day-to-day -day crisis for struggling families. We thank you, Senator Murray and Representative Schreier and Congress for the swift action taken last week to help those who are most at risk from this shortage. Senator Murray, could I please ask you to close this out before we take questions? Well, first of all, let me just thank all of you for giving us your uh, information and I know especially you, you're speaking for on behalf of so many parents and uh, all the information you're giving us. I know Kim and I will both take back to Congress to keep pressing to make sure everybody, and this is a multifaceted challenge, is standing up and doing everything they can from uh, our manufacturers to FDA, uh, to the supply chain itself, to the White House, to absolutely everybody to not only get formula out, but to get information to parents so they know where to purchase this. You shouldn't have to call your Senator or your member of Congress to get this information or to find formula. This should be much easier to do. So we're gonna keep pressing to get this um, taken care of and keep saying what went wrong, what do we need to do to make sure this never happens again. So thank you to all of you. <laughs>